Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is some motivation for young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about learning about discipleship part one. There's four parts to this video and today we'll be getting into part one. Today we're going to be learning about discipleship to better understand what discipleship is and how to disciple. Here we have our leaders today. Leaders, please introduce yourself by stating your name, the church you attend, the position you currently hold in the church and how long you have held that position. Hi, hello. So my name is my name is Michelle Allen, and I'm the associate pastor of Life Center Church of God of Privacy in the Bronx. Um, and I've held that position for a little over a year now. Um, it happened right before the pandemic. Um, I'm also the youth leader, and I have been the youth leader for like a very long time. Um, but I am looking forward to just pass the baton on to the next generation. Amen. Hi, my name is Tremita Martin. I am from Brockton Church of God of Prophecy in Brockton, Mass. I have been a youth leader in Brockton for will be four years, um, I believe, in July, this coming July. And um, yeah, happy to be here. Hey everyone, my name is Jave Ellis. I attend Bushwick Church of God of Prophecy. I currently serve as the youth pastor and the associate pastor. I've held the youth pastor position for about nine years, and I was recently appointed associate pastor maybe six months ago. I'm just an all powerful uh, women and men of God in the building today. Shout out for them of all their service to the community and the youth overall. I'd just like to give you guys a hand clap for that. Now we'll be getting into our questions for today. Our first question is, what is discipleship? Okay, forgive me for being a little um, technical with my, uh, <laughs> my definition, uh, but discipleship is teaching biblical precepts while modeling and guiding others toward living righteously as followers of Jesus Christ. So I'm just going to stop there because I know we're going to go a little bit more in depth. So let's hear what everybody else has. Okay. Um, I believe discipleship is exactly what um, Sister Michelle just said as well, too. Basically being uh, good stewards and allowing others to uh, learn from you and by leading others um, and trying to have more people come to God by showing you know what you do as a person and how you live your life. So basically um, just teaching the word of God is what I would say discipleship is. Yeah, I um, totally agree. I, I, and I would say discipleship is becoming and uh, progressively becoming more like Christ. Right? Um, and that's in reading the Bible, that's how you speak, that's how you live. But it's, it's something that's progressive. It's not a one-time thing, it's an ongoing process. And you know, the word that really speaks to me is becoming, right? and becoming more like Christ. Amen, becoming more like Christ. I'll be moving into our second question for today. What are some things you want people to know about discipleship? So um, one of the things that I think is very important for people to know about, about discipleship, as Jave said, it is an ongoing process. Um, and disciples look to disciple others. Um, so it's like a cyclical um, thing that happens. We don't always see it. I know we're going to touch that in probably the next question or so. Um, but I think it's important to know that as people surrender their hearts to God, um, that even disciple itself means a student. We become students of God. We become, become students of the word of God. We become students of learning what it means to be a Christ follower, not a churchgoer, but a Christ follower. Um, and I think it's imperative that we have systems in place in our churches um, to continue to go and make disciples because that's what we were commanded to do. Um, this is dear to my heart because I feel like as, as the years for me as a young person growing up in church that I've seen like, okay, you may have somebody hold on to you for a little bit, but then you're like on your own. <laughs> to learn what it means to be a Christian. And it's sad because I feel like in that in that time period, in that season, we allow people on their own. We have seen certain people fall off and there are misconceptions, there's misunderstandings of the word of God. But it's an ongoing process um, to maturity. Um, and as we mature, 
then that person looks for someone to disciple. So it, it's a lot, but the consistency is needed. I agree. I especially agree with the, um, the end of the, what you were saying about, um, you know, consistency and basically, you know, being able to, in another word, I would say almost like mentor, you know, have mentors and mentees. And I think that's very important because, um, like Sister Michelle was saying, or Pastor Michelle, better yet, <laughs> congratulations um, <laughs> to both of you. Um, you know, you start to disciple and you start to teach others the word and teach others the way God wants you to live your life and whatnot. But then you kind of, you know, you don't continue on with that person and it's not consistent. And even if you're not able to continue on with them, it's always good to know who can continue on with them, who you can kind of pass the torch to um, when it comes to being a disciple. And we're all disciples, you know, every single one of us. So people seem to think that to be a disciple, you have to do something special. No, like we're all disciples of God. You know, we are supposed to share his word and do our best to um, get others to follow and just lead by example, of course. And so that's, um, I think that kind of goes into the third question that we have about misconceptions about discipleship, but I'll touch on that a little bit more later. But um, the main thing I want uh, people to know about discipleship is that, you know, we are all disciples and that you have to be consistent and you also have to make sure that you're not just saying things, but you're actually showing those actions as well too. Because to be a good disciple, you have to have, um, make sure your faith shines through and that you're a good example and a good leader as well. Yeah, to totally agree. And I'm, I hope I can keep this answer short because I, I agree you know, with Pastor Michelle about um, the consistency and the need for us to kind of get back to um, discipling. Um, first, I'll say discipleship is something that requires your participation. That's one part of it. The other side is those that are looking to disciple. Um, and I believe Pastor Michelle touched on it. You can't disciple unless you have been discipled, right? And so, yes, it is a cyclical process. And I agree with Trinita, we are all commanded to disciple, right? If we go to Matthew 28, we look at the Great Commission, we are all called to be a part of that. That's not something that is reserved for pastors, ministers, deacons, you know, youth leaders, Ezra, you know, even you in being 17, right? We're all called to be a part of this ongoing process of becoming like Christ, right? Matthew 28 says, um, go ye therefore, right? And teach all nations. It's for everybody. No one's left out, right? Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Teach them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you, right? So it's something that we all have to participate in. I think the church needs to get back to being consistent in discipling. I think a lot of the times, you know, I'm not bashing the church by no means, right? But there's always room for improvement. I think a lot of times we are so concerned with the soul and winning the soul. And once we have won the soul, we sometimes forget about that soul, right? And hence what happens is that person being a newborn in Christ, they kind of fall back to the things that um, had them bound before, right? Because they have no one to walk with them. Right. Um, so when, when someone comes to Christ, there needs to be, I won't say a system in place, but there needs to be some sort of ongoing discipleship, someone that will hold their hand until they learn, they, excuse me, until they learn to walk on their own, until they mature in Christ, right? until they can get into what this thing is about, this life is about. Right. Then we need somebody to hold their hand. And that's done through mentorship. Right. And I remember back in the day, the church used to have, I'm not sure what to me, what your church used to call it, asking the show, what your church used to call it, but Bushwick used to call it cell groups. Right. And essentially those were small discipleship groups where they would meet in, you know, individuals home and it would be a small group where you can grow together. You can ask questions. And I believe that the church has to somewhat adopt um, kind of that system again or that mentality again. Right. Because um, this discipleship is, is most effective, especially for young people, in smaller group settings, right? To, so, you know, three, four, five people, you can really touch that person, really understand where they are, where they want to be, right? And then you can um, minister to them accordingly because you know what their needs are. So, you know, we have to get that back 
um, into our churches on a consistent basis. That's very important. And shout out to Brother Jave and Brother Gio. Those are my two mentors slash big brother. And they've been on this journey with me. They be holding my hands even when I don't want them to hold my hands. They they be they be with me throughout the way. And I'm so blessed because I had that discipleship. I have those two guiding me along the way. And then I I, I think of it as like, imagine if I didn't have Gio or Jave with me along this journey. Ooh, some 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 a lot of I know a lot of stuff could have went left, a lot of bad things could have happened if I didn't have them. And I'm so blessed and I always make sure that I thank them for it. And I just want that for everybody else. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, please turn on your post notification. That way anytime I upload you should send you a notification. I'll see you guys next week in part two of learning about discipleship.